In this video, we'll take a look at building an Android application using the PhoneGap Cordova CLI Builder. And we're going to be using Android Studio as well. So this is an install on a Windows 10 machine. And here we're looking at the alpha documentation, user guide, PhoneGap CLI support. Um, and this process is, uh, is documented here. So this is going to be like installing on a brand new Windows box here. I haven't installed any of this before on this particular Windows machine. So the first thing you need to do uh, is install the Java Development Kit from Oracle. So you click on this link here, um, and you're going to want to install the Java SE Development Kit. So scroll down until you find the Windows x84 version and we're going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to ask you to review the license agreement if you'd like it's here and go ahead and download that now you do need an Oracle account to do these downloads so they'll prompt you for that if you haven't previously logged into oracle.com okay and that's now completed let's go look at that in the folder I'm going to do the installation, and here we see the installation of the Java Development Kit, and we'll just accept all of that, and it'll work through the installation. Okay, and if it's successful, you should see that it's been successfully installed, so we can close at this point. And close this out as well. Let's go back to our steps. Next thing we need to do is install Gradle. Click on this link here. So now we are at the uh, Gradle site, and we want to do an installation here. Uh, it looks as though for Windows, the best thing to do is a manual install. So you'll want to do a binary download, which I've already done. And then uh, what they're telling us to do here is create a new directory on the C drive called Gradle. So uh, we need to do. And uh, let's see. Folder. And uh, I downloaded the zip file here. I'm just going to go ahead and we'll just cut that. And we'll go. Gradle directory, and from here, we'll just extract all, and we're going to extract that into the Gradle-6-3-bin. Okay, so let's see, our next step is to install Git, and we've got some instructions listed here. Let's see what we're going to do. Uh, first thing we've got to do is go get it. So we'll do that here and download the version here for Windows. And we'll just select the default installation. On the editor, you probably want to use something like Notepad Plus Plus to do the editor you can use. And uh, let's bring up the documentation. Make sure we get this part right. Here. Here. And uh, we've done that. And obviously, get from the command line, get ready to go. Um, next, um, default is to use the open SSL library for certificates. Here, we're going to change that. And say next. And scroll down in the alpha documentation. Uh, configure the line ending conversions. Uh, check out as is, commit as is. Say so, uh, okay. Next, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the default console window. And let's see. Uh, uncheck all of these options. Uh, enable file cache, system caching, enable Git credential manager, and uh, symbolic links is not there. We'll go ahead and install. It should be all set. I'll we'll switch on back to CLI documentation. And at this point, get uh, the Windows would be installed. It should be all set. 
All right, and next, let's install Node.js on this Windows machine. Install this version. Here we can see Node's installers downloaded. And now we've got Node installed. Uh, if you want to make sure that everything's okay, you can launch a command window. You just enter node. And let's see, next we need to install Cordova. So we'll do this through the NPM, the Node Package Manager. So that, uh, that looks like that was successful for us. And now we can see Cordova 9.0.0. Okay, next we're going to install Android Studio. Click on this link here. All right, and I'm just going to go to the download button here. Download, download Android Studio. Yes, that is, I agree. Okay, so we've got the download for Android Studio. I'm going to go ahead and install that. Pretty much just answer the defaults there. And we've completed. Go ahead and start it. Make sure it's running. Okay, and once all of the components are downloaded, um, you should successfully see this install by Android Studio. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, start a, an Android Studio project. I would just say it's a basic activity. This is just really for testing. Okay, now once uh, Gradle successfully builds this app, this is what your your screen is going to look like. Notice we've got a couple of updates that we could go ahead and install now. Uh, but what I want you to pay attention to is under Tools, SDK Manager. Uh, what has been installed right now is API level 29 for Android 10. So uh, depending upon the API level that you want to support, at, and you can you can select all these different SDKs to install. So um, let's say for example we want to run, uh, make sure that we're running Android 8.1 for Oreo. If you go ahead and check that. And you might say, well, I'd also like to run Android 9 uh, and make sure those are installed. You can go ahead and do that and just select those. And now support for all of those SDKs will pull in. So now when you do a build, you can say, okay, this is the, this is the, the uh, platform that I'm targeting. Okay, and the final step in this installation is to set the environment variables in the path. So in order to do that, what I want you to do is uh, just click on search, and in here, just type in uh, env environment. So uh, click on this button, environment variables, and you need to define two variables in the user variables. One is Android underbar SDK underbar root, and in there you want to set the path to the Android SDK. In my case. C users, my name, app data, local, Android, and SDK. That looks like that. And you can browse for it right here. Same with the Java home. In my case, it's under program files Java and then JDK 1.8.0 under bar 251. Same thing. Looks like this. You can browse for the directory and just put it in there. And we're going to use these variables when we set the path. So the next thing to do is to set the path. So you just edit the path. Um, you run down to the bottom, and yours will probably end somewhere around here. Uh, notice that I've added an entry for Java Home slash bin. Also, for the Android SDK root, platform tools, and also uh, to look for a Gradle, in the in my case, I installed Gradle in the Gradle directory, Gradle-6.3, and then to search through bin. 
Once that's done, now all of your variables will be set correctly and things should move, move along quite smoothly. Next, we'll take a look at generating the application within Alpha and then bringing uh, those files into Android Studio. Okay, so now from within Alpha, we're going to use the PhoneGap App Builder Genie to generate a CLI build for Android. So we'll select PhoneGap. Our App Build target right here is set to CLI, and I've got Android checked. We're going to run the in-app browser test. This loads an in-app browser within the, uh, the application, and we'll see that running in an emulator. And you fill everything else out pretty much the way you normally would, include all the plugins that you'd like to have, and then save and launch the PhoneGap CLI builder. Once you do that, in this case, we're going to create the images and so on, and it's going to say, well, where would you like to install it? In my case, I'm going to put it in a folder called CLI test. I'm generating an Android build. Um, if it were an existing app, I could just check this update existing app. It wouldn't delete all the files, and uh, it can be a little bit quicker. Uh, over here, uh, include update custom app icon or launch image. You need to do this at least once when you're building this app. And then what type of build are you going to do, a debug build or a production build? In our case, this is a debug build. And then you can say, well, what do you want to do after the APK file is built? So this script will, in fact, build the APK file, assuming everything's installed properly. And that APK file could be installed directly onto a device. Um, but what we're going to do is we're more interested in, the, in using Android Studio and opening up this project in Android Studio so that you could use the native um, debugging tools and so on. And you can also use the emulator, which is really nice. So that's what I'm going to be showing you here today. So in this case, we'll go ahead and build this app. Once we click on Build App, then the scripts are going to run. And this can take a little bit because it's going to do a full build, so uh, uh, that can take a bit of time. But when this is completed, you'll have a full Android project. And in our case, what we're going to do is look at those files and create a project in Android Studio that's based on everything that we're generating here. Now, if you were to make changes to the project um, through, say, addition of more components and, and JavaScript or whatever, um, it's probably best to just generate a new project. Uh, and in this case, um, you could just generate a new project, update, uh, you could do an update on it too, and then you could uh, just open that project up in Android Studio and it would be fine. Here we can see the build was successful. And we'll check back when all the files are done. And that process is now completed. Now go, let's go take a look at what files were generated. So if we take a look at our C drive, I've got a uh, CLI test folder here. And here's the, uh, the project that we just generated, in-app browser. Uh, we would look in platforms, Android, and this is our full uh, Cordova project. So this is the project that we'll open up in, um, in Android Studio. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to uh, create a new Android Studio project with the files that, uh, that Alpha has created for you. So in this case, just say you want to open an existing Android Studio project and point it to the directory, in this case CLI test, the in-app browser, go to the platforms directory, and Android will show up there. Just go ahead and click on that. It will open up the application. Now I've got an emulator running right now. It's the Pixel 3 uh, running API 24. So if, uh, if you don't have a, a virtual device defined, you're going to need to go into Tools, run the AVD Manager, your Android Virtual Device Manager, and from here you can pick whatever virtual device you, you want. So uh, let's say you want to run a, a Nexus 5 or something like that. You can pick that, and you could say, which, which API level do I want? So I could say, well, maybe I'm interested in running this for Android 9.0. If I click on this download, it will download the full uh, SDK and install the emulator for the Android 9 um, version. 
I'm not going to do that now because it just takes a little bit of time, but this is how you can generate different virtual device configurations. Uh, since I've got one here and I've already got it up and running, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. But in order to uh, run the app, install the app on this emulator, all you have to do is hit this button right here. And you'll see Gradle Build running. That can take a bit. There's your install, and there's your app running on the emulator. And I click on the button here. You can see that we've gone to the Apache site uh, within the in-app browser. And if I hit this button here, it's going to go back to the, uh, the root of the PhoneGap application. So you can see how simple it really was. I, I mean, all you have to do is uh, go to the Android folder in the app that you, uh, that you generated um, and then open that up and it's going to go ahead and uh, now you have the, all of the functionality and the features of Android Studio. You've got a full-blown debugger, profiler. There's a lot of things you can do in here. And there are a lot of tutorials that Android has put together to, uh, you know, to help you out with Android Studio. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure that I will end up doing some more videos like this to, uh, to show you more and more things that you can do with it. But this is one way of generating uh, and testing using Android Studio and an emulator uh, rather than installing the, the app on, the, on your device. So I hope you learned something new today.